All right, welcome everybody to uh, this week's edition of the um, Ronin Seminar. Uh, today we got Martin Bola, who is going to present to us, let's see, the title, as I recall, is Geoethics, Human Niche, and Citizen Science. And I will hand it over to him, and Martin will give you an introduction to who he is, what he's all about, and then he's going to teach us some stuff. Please, take it away, Martin. Okay. Thank you very much, John, for introducing me. Uh, I will now first try to get the presentation on the on the screen. So, and uh, I think so. Can you see the first slide, John? No, I hear nothing. I, I can I can see the first slide. Uh, it looks like yes, if, I can if see you expand it. that window, it will get bigger for us. So, very nice. Okay, so uh, that's make it, my... make it full screen. That would be great. Uh, it should it should work if you do full screen. Maybe maybe part of that dot 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 video over there or dot 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 menu. No. That's uh, let's let me try it differently. That is as big as I can do it on my screen so that I see the full, the full slide. Yeah, uh, I think that'll work. Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, for those who have uh, looked uh, into the short outline which I made, so I speak from Europe, more precisely from Brussels, that is the capital in, of Belgium, and the place of where my employer is, European Commission. I'm working here since uh, more than 25 uh, years, and I'm basically this time a science administrator. Before that, I had been educated as physical oceanographer, and now in the process giving me a third phase in professional ac activities, I have some weeks ago found and joined the Running Institute, and this is a very interesting uh, experience uh, for me. So, and that's, I think, all what I would like to say is introduction uh, to me and my person. And uh, if there are questions, uh, then it's more. And I do quite a stuff uh, with clear name on the internet, so you can find out on your own. So, in the transition to a third part of professional life, I found a group of colleagues which follow an issue which runs under the title geoethics, which are questions on the interface of the earth sciences and the society. And I found that as an interesting uh, subject uh, for me to look into it. And I, in that context, I will give you today a talk which is composed out of two elements. First, an introduction into this International Association for Promoting Geoethics, and then a little bit more on uh, substance. Both talks I've given in the last months of this year at two international conferences, and I updated them a little bit. So far, introduction, and now what is geoethics? What is this uh, International Association for Promoting Geoethics? Basically, if one has to say, first, it is a bottom-up movement in some parts of the geoscience communities, which got concerned about questions at the interface between their professions and the society. They gathered some year ago, and they came up with a description of what the geoethics uh, it consists. I will not bother you to, uh, read, the, to read the text in details, just take the overall picture is our questions and research on the interface in what geoscientists do in their various uh, professions. And for those who are not familiar with this notion, geoscientists may look after volcanoes, may look after soil dynamics, maybe an oceanographer as I have been initially uh, educated. So in the last five years, this organization uh, has grown to quite some size with 1,750 members October last year on a global, global scale. 
So a number of national uh, sections all over uh, the globe. This structure is quite con conventional. You see here the basic elements, executive council and a board of uh, experts, which is the part of the organization where I am also uh, actively uh, participating. Uh, missions and goals are quite conventional. So promote what geoetics is, uh, to uh, develop the thinking further, to uh, do publications and other means to uh, promote uh, the thinking and to bring more and more people into uh, into this uh, this ball game all over it's an emerging field so efforts were giving in to the definition what it means uh, then what are main topics of uh, research so for example how the individual geoscientist thinks about his professions interactions with colleagues so all what runs under research integrity and uh, sound professional uh, life then the relationship with society and the relationship with the uh, in environment some thinking have been went into designing something as a geoethical promise building on uh, the Hippocratic Oath, what is uh, done in the, machine, in the medicine sector. And we had a very important gathering in September last year, where uh, we published the Cape Town Statement on Geoethics, which summarizes uh, the process uh, made, uh, made so far. And we are now uh, in an activity trying to gather uh, adherence, support from other organizations in the geoscience field with this uh, statement. All this is a process which is in making. So we do the traditional things, a number of peer-reviewed publications over the last uh, five, uh, five years. There are working groups which uh, follow particular issues where we have a sensitivity to responsible mining so how you run the best possibly way main mining sites and we are definitely an international organization having a lot a lot of affiliation and agreements with a number of uh, bodies uh, of national bases of uh, international uh, bases so that's a short introduction in the structure in which I uh, cooperate with. And now, and a little bit slower path of uh, talking, I will try to give you a little bit of, uh, of substance. So, citizen science, geoethics, and the human niche. To set off, you find here a photo of a query close to the place where I'm from in uh, Germany, a query which had been in operation since the 15th century. There was a little bit of coal digging and the small insight gives you a view on the coal seams which were exploited there. You find there a car key and then you see it's only several centimeters uh, thick. Uh, so that is geoscience research context. It is was important, it still is minor important for the local economy. And today, this is a site which you go with your family uh, to visit to look a little bit in the interior uh, of the earth. So, what I would like to argue today on the context of this presentation, this is in the end, already in the beginning, a kind of a take off away uh, message. You have on one side the applied geosciences and on the other side you have the functioning of the society. And geoethics is claims would like uh, to provide a link between these two realms. Applied geoscience are necessary in order to build uh, what is called the human niche and I will come to examples to illustrate what it means Basically, it means the way how we build our production systems, how we organize our consumption patterns, and what are the interactions then with the non-living part of the... 
And we are in a situation, uh, I think we are all aware of it, that our societies have to continue to uh, function, but under conditions where change is up to us. And I think that uh, these, bring these tools together require a far stronger side of citizen sciences activities in geoscience. And as I will show in the following, uh, there is something coming, but uh, the involvement of citizens in geoscience activities is still meager compared to see with uh, this others. So, what is meant by humanish? Uh, you will find at the bottom of the slide references to uh, two papers where you can read up more detail. By the way, that is a way of presenting, which you will also find in following slides. So it's a small star and then some uh, literature uh, source. So what is meant by a human mish? It is meant in the end the intersection of the biogeosphere and the sphere of human activities, be they of social, economic, cultural, or political nature. All this goes into the notion human humanish. When we look on the material side, as I already said, it means mainly the production system and consumption pattern that embeds in the way how they organized geoscience know-how, and I will give you a number of uh, very conventional examples a little bit further down in the talk. Also, it means uh, that in order for our well-being, uh, we would like to have a biogeosphere uh, which by its events does not disrupt our human activities too strongly, at least do it in a way that we are able uh, to handle uh, the hazards. So what is meant by geoethics? Uh, the, for me, the key wording is here on this slide, and I read it out for you. And by the way, when you go into Google Scholar, uh, some months ago, you find about 500 publications. That is more or less nothing. This is something which is emerging. So geoethic means research and ref reflection on the values which underpin appropriate behaviors and practices wherever human activities interact with the Earth system. So the subject of research is identified, their criteria in it, also, we like to look into ethical, social, and cultural implications of geoscience education, research, and practice. And last but not least, it is about the social role and responsibility of geosciences in conducting their activities. How now come from geoethics and human niche to bring it together? So the interactions of human activities with the Earth system builds the human niche. And when we look on how it is happening, it often does, it not, does not involve a geoscientist who is acting in a professional capacity. These interactions uh, are tightly knitted into citizens' daily lives activities and the way how they are conducted are reflecting the citizens' values and perceptions. So, from my understanding, geoethics goes beyond the geoscience uh, discipline. It is about the niche, niche building, and as I said, it is a, about appropriate behaviors and practices wherever human activities interact with the Earth system. So, now I will give you some simple examples to see where geosciences you find in your daily surroundings. First, we have to start with things, simple things like the civil engineering, dredging a waterway, building a shore defense, or operating a power plant. All these kind of infrastructure are purposely built in order to interact the human sphere and the geosphere. If we push a little bit further, and for example, bring in technology which has involved and the applications get more convoluted. We can think about renewable energy from wind, tide, and sun. We have for transport, tide, ice, and seaway forecasting for shipping. And also 
we are happy to uh, communicate here on this means because there are cables laid in the ocean and also satellites which transmit news which uh, uh, nourish our position systems are sheltered against solar storms and niche building you can even take it from a further abstract view when you think about towns and other urban yellows they are intersections between the local and global biosphere through massive fluxes of matter and energy they receive drinking water and eject wastewater they receive an electric power of fuels and ejecting heat they are receiving food and ejecting manufactured goods which are transported somewhere else and are finally put to waste on a different part of the globe. So I think one has a quite firm basis to say that our contemporary societies have deeply built in geoscience know-how which on which the functioning which the functioning builds on. And therefore, uh, geoscience know-how is part of a common good. Uh, and this even more when we are on a globe where we have anthropogenic global, global change. So I make the claim that consequently, geoethics concerns also the conduct of citizens and regards both our ordinary lifestyles, including questions of values and perceptions to which we refer in order to guide our actions, and many of our professional activities uh, which we execute. When you go mentally back to the previous slide and simply run through the examples and put professions against this, the list gets relatively long. So when against this insight into what niche building means, what uh, geoethics means, uh, and I look on the Cape Town statement that we were so happy uh, to find agreement a year ago, uh, I can say yes, it addresses the geoprofessional, uh, it addresses the importance of geoscience uh, in our modern society, but the statement is silent about particip participation of citizens in geoscience research that it does not so the statement does not reflect on citizen geoscientists and that i think is a, a lacuna let me make uh, a short excursion into what is meant by uh, citizen science uh, so for those who are not familiar Basically, there are three generic use cases. There are citizens participating in data gathering and data an analysis. There are sometimes citizens get involved in designing research questions and the experimental design, and quite often driven by the advocacy activity of the citizens, they are involved somehow in policy and impact questions. And then there is a number of PS so, pour mémoire, which one can uh, quote for. There's quite a robust corpus of practical guidance and experiences, and I give one reference for a European context. So, there's no excuse for geosciences that we do not know how we could, should involve the citizens more. Uh, when we go to the analysis, we see the early paper from about Kulmberg from 2016, uh, their geoscience projects is the minor part of projects and research activities in which citizens are uh, participating. And when I did uh, Google Scholar Church beginning of this year for citizen science, I have about uh, 16,600 publications out of a five a years uh, period. But when I do some uh, research for citizen geoscience, I had the pleasure to find two. Two quotes only. So, in order to make get a wider view, and uh, I would like to pass a little bit uh, time on the questions: what science and citizens meant in the past, and what therefore citizen science could mean in the present time. It's a lay excursion into history, so I ask, 
I ask for a little bit of patience of the colleagues who have more education uh, in this field when I'm a little bit uh, too much at the, at the surface. At least to my view, uh, we can make the following statements. Uh, first, the modern science is a relatively recent uh, process and emerged in the European Renaissance, and it was then a very tiny urban elite which undertook something which may be called research and development. And that their insights trickled very, very slowly into the daily dealings of the uh, citizens. And it took a long time of daily uh, practice in order to uh, integrate them for example, the number of changes in the agricultural uh, practice, uh, which one can, for example, show that there are some places in central Italy, which were the borderline where agriculture exploitation was possible. And in the earlier Middle Evil time, up to the Renaissance, people moved in and out of this area, depending on what are the local climate conditions was and, and from the Renaissance onward might change agriculture practices, people had a permanent uh, living here. So since the Renaissance, two centuries went on with a lot of social and economic political developments. There are some scientists and some technologists, uh, they were some bourgeois and noblemen who were supported by their own wealth, by some public prices, Governments invested a lot in infrastructure, bridges, road channels, mining technology, means for power projections, but still the scientific findings and technology developments got only used very slowly in the daily dealings of the, uh, of the cities. So when we turn to modern uh, times, uh, there's a dramatic change. With the capitalistic production, uh, the social basis of doing science and technology and deploy it was very much enlarged by the industrialized production. Uh, nowadays, we say that 90% of more of all scientists are living today. It's a mess profession in developed countries. Several percentage of the uh, populations are working somehow as researchers, scientists, or in it is. And on the other side, uh, we can observe a process uh, that the society itself and the governments are more and more in a role which I qualify here as passive uh, spectator, which is more pushed than having an active uh, taking into uh, the development. And I think this is a, this is a risk. Yeah? If citizens are passive spectator, means quite often that they will get frustrated. And the fr a frustrated uh, citizen is a societal risk. The frustration comes because the speed and the depth of the different change processes, which we call innovations, and their interferences are so strong. Uh, the change processes are in a way that they are disrupting habitual social dealings. Uh, how we organize the human niche and people are not able uh, to follow and the gap between the ordinary daily and scientific technical know-how is uh, widening. Um, I find this is an issue because this, all this hinders that the citizens get an insight in the change processes and not having an insight in these change processes makes them not fit for what is, what is coming. I found one very interesting example, and I will uh, bore you a little bit with uh, reading the long quote, which is from an, uh, an article in uh, Nature uh, about a year ago. Uh, one has really to take the taste of this uh, statement. I'm still today, I'm surprised that the editor of this quite good uh, uh, journal has not intervened then and let it so. The saying is a global bioeconomy must rebuild natural capital and improve the quality of life for a growing world population. It should balance managing common goods such air, water and soil with the economic expectation of people. Three types of innovation will be needed. Also needed will be citizen science evaluations of new houses, local wood recycling and construction efforts. 
Sustainable food systems will require advances in plant breeding, food products, and farming and cultivation techniques. Inclusiveness and knowledge transfer are important. So, looking on that statement from with my background, I have a number of comments. I take the point that bioeconomy is an emerging driver of is a driver which is emerged and will cause major major change. But what I see in the uh, statement there are strong links between bioeconomy and geoscience, but it's unspoken. It's not reflected. It's not seen. If I say I talk about common goods such as air, water, and soil, these are essential geo features of the human niche. Uh, if I claim a bioeconomy designed to rebuild natural capital and improve the quality of life, it means to do engineering at a planetary scale. And then, finally, the citizen scientists are seen as an end of line product tester only who comes in to the last i think this can only be for the concerned uh, frustrating what i try to take as lessons out of uh, these uh, first i see a need of intermediary uh, agents who are interfacing between geosciences and the society societies hmm? the hidden nature of the know-how of geoscience inside as i illustrated above uh, makes them one as a common good, public good, but on the other side, the hidden nature uh, makes really difficult to understand how much of know-how is in there, what it means and what it applies. And I think that geosciences should exploit citizen scientists more as a, a resource to reach out to practitioners, uh, to bring in their experiences, their daily practice, and therefore provide an early test bed on the practice of geoscience in tight within and other and different uh, communities. So what to do next in geosciences? First, definitely call for more citizens geoscientists, which means going beyond just having a data body uh, to seek a complementary partner to do research. Uh, and to research purposefully how to operate a sustainable hum, uh, human niche. Uh, the contributions which GeoCity Science and Scanlever are evidently from data gathering and data analysis, including them into the analysis of research finding, uh, design and selection of research questions, design of methodologies and conduct of experiments and publications and dissemination and outreach. So having developed that some months ago and come out with the final conclusion that on one side, geoethics is much about ordinary citizens as is about geosciences. On the other side, that our knowledge-based societies require to understand the importance of uh, geosciences and therefore we need citizen geosciences. Uh, I turned to the conference, a big uh, conference in Europe, the, General Assembly of the European Geoscience Union of uh, April 2017, uh, that the AGU is the sister organization to the AGU in the US of similar size, and the 2017 conference, there was one session referring to citizen science, and altogether I got uh, 13 scattered uh, distribution uh, contributions over a program with more than 14,000 different uh, contributions. So I thought there's something to do on this matter. Uh, and I was looking forward to the next conference in uh, April next year. And happily over the last months, it came clear that we will have nine sessions on citizen science in this geoscience co conference. And I look very much forward uh, to visit them and to see that my uh, what I saw as a worry some months ago and a plea to do more uh, uh, citizen science also in geosciences that there is movement and momentum uh, coming up. So, so far my talk, I thank you for the attention of the last 30 minutes and I hope that there was something uh, 
new end for you.